Um, if there, uh, if there's anyone who it, who is sharing anything that they do not wish to have recorded, uh, you appreciate letting me know so that I can uh, so that I can pause the uh, recording at that time. Um, ah, I did, did something I didn't intend to do up there. Let's see here. Excuse me, just a sec here. Darn it! Hate it when I do that. <laughs> Hit the wrong button. I'm gonna see ya. I had it all nicely renamed too. My uh there we go. All right, let's see here. Eat that. that. Okay, let's see here. No, I'll just leave her up there. I'm using a, a separate account with my wife's name on it there. So that's just another monitor I have here with me. So all right, let me see here if I can get this to look a little bit more the way it should for me, and then I will continue. All right. Uh, let's see here. Okay, next. Um, if uh, if uh, appreciate it, if uh, anybody would uh, just um, mute your microphones unless you are actively sharing, and open the uh, open the chat window in Zoom. And if you have anything that you want to share with everybody, or you know links or whatever uh, questions, etc., po post them in there. And let's see. Whoop. Um, some uh, potentially good news coming. Um, I had an opportunity to visit the first Washington Field House down in Kent, the new one, and um, the uh, the address is here. And I was able to uh, to take some pictures of it when I was there. And wouldn't you know it? Let me see. Get the. Let's see here. There we go. Um, so they are, uh, they're in a facility very similar to what they had before. And, uh, this is, uh, this is the, the front of their facility over here, this one here. And then, uh, and then this, the one on this side here, the, the left one, uh, office entry. Um, this is out back the inner urban trail that runs underneath the high tension power lines is kind of out right back behind the facility. Um, these are just to come up some pictures of the interior and it's about the same size as the previous facility, but much, much less office space. This is the, this, this area here is the extent of the office space for the entire facility. So the whole thing is, um, except for this small area here is, uh, is warehouse and uh, kind of looks like it did before but they have not yet put up the big industrial shelving, which is going up along the, this um, uh, north wall, which is on the, the left side of, the, of these two pictures here. Uh, let me see, I'll get you, see if I can find a, yeah, so this, this picture here, you see the forklift there, um, and um, there, there is a roll up doorway in the back, which unfortunately is not accessible. If you, <laughs> it looks like it was put in there for access by the railroad tracks, which are actually back behind the facility, but there's no way to get to it. It's, it's the only ground level roll up door the facility has. So um, the other ones are uh, loading dock height. So designed for trucks to back up to them. Um, so um, we'll have to see how that works as far as um, you know, getting large things in and out of there. These are just some a uh, couple of pictures of the interior office area, which I'm told is actually going to be repurposed uh, for the most part. So we would not be able to meet in there. Uh, so we will uh, we will be meeting out in the high bay area, and I'll show you a little better picture of that here. Um, we may actually be able to get to use some of the uh, first video equipment to do uh, streaming of our meetings. So we're kind of looking forward to that. So this picture in the center here is kind of the general vicinity where we would where we would set up chairs and such so we probably have a screen mounted up on this wall either a projection screen or possibly a large tv we're not sure yet they haven't they haven't gotten there 
Um, let's see, I'm going to show you. This guy here is uh, it's kind of a panorama. So I lean against one of the uh, one of the posts in the middle of the warehouse there, and just took a panorama. So this will be kind of a, should be kind of an idea of, a, of the shape and the layout of things. So you can see over here on the far left is the north wall. That's going to be all industrial shelving for, uh, for storage. And then uh, you see they've got on the south wall, they've got all their, uh, the small stuff in their little bins. Um, and then uh, here would kind of near two rolls are in this general uh, vicinity. And there's a restroom here, and front door is just kind of through the office. So you just come in through the front walk of the office and out one of these doors here. And, um, and then there's three loading dock doors that are, uh, as, like I say, about, I'm thinking about four feet off the ground from the outside. So, um, it's looking like, um, according to Kevin Ross, uh, it's probably going to be, it will, we probably won't be able to get in before June because they are, first is still moving in. Um, they're also getting ready for their upcoming competition. So they, they are really, really busy right now and, and actually preparing the facility for use by anybody else is sort of a, uh, not at the top of their to-do list right now. Just getting this play, you know, getting their own equipment organized and uh, in, 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 uh, a usable form. So, so there's uh, there's kind of a few sort of standing up those little gray bins that are all. Um, there there should, uh, should be a possible to do. Uh, side contest type stuff in the area once they get the clean bit. a lot of stuff is in, ha, just has nowhere to go yet so um so anyway that, uh, that that'll be fun let's see who i hear a microphone who would that be is that well that was you donna <laughs> I just, sorry, I just muted you, Donna, if you were saying something. Huh. I'm not hearing, not, not hearing anything coming from you there. You are unmuted though, but I'm not hearing you. Hmm. Okay. So anyway, um, the, is, this is um, uh, this last picture down here I'll show you before we move on here. This is 72nd Avenue South or yeah, 72nd Avenue South down in Kent, uh, just south of 220th. So um, to, to get to the building, you're going to, you, you know, Google will give you um, directions actually kind of down the block from this location. But where you want to turn in is right here between the A and the B buildings and then drive all the way to the back. So that's where the that's where their facility is. So if you um, if you plug in the address, it will it, it will get you kind of in the general neighborhood, but won't get you really exactly there. So um, we may uh, modify the address to GPS coordinates or something like that in the in, on the website so that that uh, works a little more accurately. So anyway, uh, any questions? Oops. Close that. Close that. And I'm going to get back to that. So there, there is the address. Um, I can't. Uh, it's on the website. Well, let me see. No, I'm sorry. It's not on the website yet. I will. I plan to get it there soon. But uh, anyway, um, new website is. Uh, I believe is in pretty good shape. So uh, so do give it a do give it a look and. Uh, let me know if you find anything uh, kind of out of sorts or missing or whatever. Um, everything that was on the old website should be available. And then there's also the new content. So um, continuing to do weekly robotics classes with some kids at a church in Burien. Um, and uh, that's, uh, that's coming along. Um, let's see. I don't know. I talked about that last time. Uh, so I'm going to just kind of 
I'm going to kind of jump through some of these things. Um, we still have our, our kits available. Um, Lloyd Moore has uh, both of these available, but he's not here. But you can reach out to the club at the uh, club email address if you're interested in one of these two kits. Um, and uh, we can arrange a, a meetup to, to, get, to, to get one for you. And, and uh, so one's an Arduino Uno based, and then the other one is a Parallax propeller chip based kit. So um, you, can, uh, you can visit the website and you can find the technical details about these guys if you're interested in either of them. And let's see. Okay. Yeah. And then of course uh, I see that it uh, looks like everybody uh, made it to the uh, unusual time for our meeting today. Thank you for, uh, I don't know how many of you may have, uh, if anybody jumped on uh, earlier, I, I had a sort of a, a, a redirection presentation running in a zoom meeting earlier this morning, just in case anybody forgot that uh, it was a meeting time this afternoon. So it was kind of pointing you to come at this time. So um, we will, uh, I'll go ahead and let the, um, uh, uh, the, we'll, we'll stop recording, but we'll go ahead and let the robotics discussion. If it, if you'd like to continue doing that, uh, you can just hang on here and just chat among yourselves. We won't be recording that part of the meeting. So it'll be just the, uh, just the main part of the present, uh, the, this part and then the presentation. Um, always appreciate, uh, Solicit, uh, soliciting presenters for us here. We, um, uh, Robert, uh, Robert was the one that actually actually pointed me to you, Dr. Kondo. He, uh, he's very actively scouring the internet for interesting presenters and he's, he fills my inbox full of suggestions. So appreciate, the, appreciate him doing that and, and I appreciate you uh, joining us. And let's see. So here's here's what's coming. So I'm I'm you know I'm 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 getting a little I've been a little lazy the last couple of months here. I've I'm only booked through uh, uh, September, so I'll have to get going and to get fill it out for the rest of the year. But um, we've got all kinds of uh, interesting things coming, and of course I got I hope we've got a really cool one coming today. And um, also plan to have some open discussions sort of sandwiched in between some of the others, particularly if I can't find a presenter for a particular month, then, uh, then we'll have a, just a general discussion on some hopefully interesting topic. And a little bit later, um, is that Yukata? Is that, is that correct? Dr. Yutaka, Yutaka, sorry. Yutaka. <laughs> did, I, or, did, I, did, I, did I spell uh, it incorrectly or is it just uh, sorry y-u-t-a-k-a -A. u-t-a-k-a -A. okay okay it looks like okay. all right okay so I will, it's uh, okay yeah, yeah i know the japanese right. you know what? pronunciation I'm, is not i am going to go ahead and fix that thank you I'll have to fix the other one too here. Let me just jump ahead and do that because otherwise I might not <laughs> remember. Yes. Thank you. There we go. Okay. All right. Let me get back to where we were and start that. Okay. So this is this is a kind of an unusual thing for us. We normally have these meetings at ten o'clock our time in the morning. So um, you know we were kind of a morning and then early afternoon. So, uh, but I know that would have that would have put this at a very inconvenient time for you to present. So, <laughs> so uh, but uh, we were happy to uh, to shift things here to accommodate your uh, you know the considerable time difference between our our countries, and uh, we really appreciate your. Uh, you're accommodating us as well. And uh, so we will get to you in, uh, in a little bit. Um, let's see, um, Robothon, uh, Donna, do you wanna share anything about, uh, let's see, let me see if you're, uh, I'm still showing you muted. So check and make sure that uh, I wasn't hearing you earlier. Let's see. So I'm showing you unmuted at my end here. Huh. 
Very strange. Yeah, I don't seem to be getting any audio from your end there for some reason. <laughs> okay, well, I'll, uh, I guess I can kind of ad lib here. So um, from our last uh, Robothon meeting, we uh, we we uh, kind of talking about uh, potentially doing an event coming in the fall, uh, an actual live event again. Um, so uh, we'd be doing in conjunction with War, um, the War, uh, uh, Western Allied Robotics, so they're combat robots down at the Seattle Center. So that is at least tentatively on in, in the plan, um, assuming that nothing happens that actually messes that up. Um, we may uh, we may try to do a, a virtual event of some sort coming up in in the April May or May June timeframe, um, something similar to the, the previous ones where we have presenters uh, share uh, a, you know a short fifteen or twenty minute presentation on a project and have like four five five or maybe six presenters present over the the course of the event, and um, so that. Um, if you want to sign up for something like that, you would go to go to robothon.org. Um, you can also let us know uh, via email, and uh, in case there's uh, any any issues with actually getting registered for that, just uh, reach out to us directly and let us know you're interested in that. And we'll make sure that uh, that we get uh, get you in the get you in the queue. Um, so other than that. Um, don't know what contests we may do in the in the physical event, but um, at this point, uh, we're you know probably be in the next couple of, of meetings. We'll be kind of talking about what contests we want to actually implement. So, any questions? Okay. Um, as I mentioned earlier, uh, virtual robotics discussions can continue after the meeting, I'll, but I will shut recording off during that time. And I have a birthday party that I have to go to, so I'll just leave the meeting running and uh, come back while sometime later and shut things down. So um, feel free to, to do that if you like. Um, so now is opportunity uh, for you guys, if you have anything in particular to share. And I was kind of not seeing a particular fellow that reached out to me, uh, James Egan, who has a project that he wants, uh, he's looking for um, looking for people to actually assist him. And I, and I think we've posted some stuff to the, um, the, the groups, the Seattle uh, Robotics groups to, uh, you know, he's, he's actually, I mean, he's looking to hire people to, to help work on his project. So if anybody is looking for something like that, um, if you if you go back to the top of the chat, there's a, a shared link to uh, Google Drive uh, for this uh, document. That's kind of a kind of a presentation of what he has in mind. So if, if you're if that's you know if you're looking for something to do that uh, you know maybe bring in a little money on the side, uh, go, go ahead and check that out. And um, uh, you can uh, reach out to the um, reach out to the to to me with the with your email and I can put you in touch with James. So anybody uh, anybody have anything interesting that they would like to share? Come on. Yes? Yeah, the key's hanging downstairs. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, need a new battery in one of my cars. Darn it. Anybody? I could real quick. I'm having a little tough technical difficulties. I can't close the Internet Explorer. Hmm. Okay. Let's see. Let me uh, give me just a second. I can't close this Google Docs. It won't close on me. Oh, oh, that's curious. Let's go to Task Manager. I love that. Oh no, it's not open. Nothing. 
systems open. Oh, here it is. Microsoft Edge, right click, end task. Right click, end task. Well, that cut me out of Zoom. Well, we're seeing uh, we're seeing something there on your camera. So I picked up this uh, kit for just a couple of bucks. Uh, it's by Tamsin Cosmos. I got it at Goodwill, I think. And I've just been putting this uh, arm together today. There are six projects that you can do with it, which is another reason why I like it. Ugh. Uh, let's see here, where are they at? One, two, three, four, five, and six. Basically make a, uh, a robot, robotic uh, gripper, a robotic arm. And I'm having a f uh, fun with it. I mean, I just put it together in just a couple of hours here. Only trouble I found and probably why it was in Goodwill was because the tube was cut to the wrong specs. So I had to find a, where's my camera? I tried to mend it right here. It wasn't a very good mend. So I had to find a replacement tube at uh, the hardware store and it was hard to find uh luckily one of the hardware stores true value had one hmm. stuff uh essentially if i do it without the pneumatic tube i just activate the hand here let's see if i can do it on my own <laughs> oh here it is uh no maybe not i'm gonna cheat <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's just a gripper. So it's all pneumatic then. Yeah, it's supposed to be pneumatic. It's up. It's uh, functions on this uh, cylinder in the back, and it's got a pump on top. See if I can turn that there. So you just pump up the cylinder, and it goes through several. I think I have to cut one of these in half and put it to the to the. Uh, uh one of these tubes on here and stuff but i got to measure it out first other than that uh everything seems to be working just fine i like how you can uh where is that i like how you can drop it up and down like that <laughs> and oh yeah it rotates side to side here as well so I thought that was a little neat. And then it has this little, uh, where my hand, where's my hand? So it has this uh, trigger right here. So you go that way and then the other way and stuff. And that should open and close the hand if I can get the right length of tubing cut up and everything like that. Okay. Oh, that's it for me. <laughs> So you could, you, you could probably use a servo to move that little, that little lever, and then you could, you could motorize the pump potentially trying to figure out if there's a way to, you know, um, uh, electrify the thing so that you could control it with a, with a microcontroller. Oh yeah. Well, I'm, I'm definitely sure you could take out the pump elements and put a little, uh, uh, couple of uh, electronics in there, but then you'd also have to put in a battery or power source too, as usual and stuff. But uh, I thought it was cool. So, you know, and for, you know, a couple of, just a couple of dollars, it, it, 
it's a pretty essentially a brand new kit instead of paying 30 i paid maybe three i can't remember how much it was but it wasn't it wasn't more than five dollars do you have any idea how how old it is as far as you know when it was uh when it was a um let me look in the let me look in the manual here real quick it's not old at all um uh, one sec this is where i need my light Twenty seventeen, first edition. So only only a few years old. So two thousand seventeen. You know, somebody just didn't use it probably and donated it to Goodwill. Or that, that or they, cut, they cut that tube too short. Sure. Uh, Does it have a name? Yeah. Samson Cosmos Mechanical Engineering Robotic Arms. Hmm. Thames is T H A M E S, like the river, and my stepmother. And Cosmos is K O S M O S. So, I mean, it's for ages seven to 14 usually, but I still like those things. Cosmos, okay, yeah, it looks like uh, Thames Cosmos. They usually have a lot of fun kits together, uh, uh, not just robotics, but science-based uh, uh, kits that you can get at the, I love to get go to the science museum and then uh, go to the, the shop at the end of, end of uh, whatever exhibitions that they have and they always have cool toys. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes that, you know, that's where I get you know, the, you can get some really cool robotic kits and stuff that you would you might not get at other places. Mm -hmm. hmm. Cool. Well, anybody uh, that is that all you got there, uh, Colin? That's all I have. Um, yeah. Uh, it should be, yeah, that's all I have today. Okay. I mean, what, I find it crazy. I'm the only person. <laughs> well, I see Greg is unmuted, so I'm guessing you have something. Uh, I have a brief update on my latest challenges. Okay. Um, so this board right here uh, is a custom board that I've built intended to drive up to six stepper motors. It has a uh, Sam D21 in the middle. Uh, Sam D21 is the same processor. It's an, another Atmel processor. Uh, runs at 48 megahertz typically. Uh, the Arduino Zero has that processor, as do numerous other uh, like Adafruit boards. Uh, they all seem to use the doesn't matter which board, they all seem to use the 48 pin, 256K flash size. Um, my challenge came about, I, I soldered up this board and couldn't get any signs of life from it. Um, the, the challenge was it's the 128K version because I could not find any of the 256K versions anywhere. Um, and when you're using the Arduino framework with a different processor, there's numerous files you have to touch and tweak. So I soldered up another one of those chips just on a little breadboard. Uh, and I you know, have never been so pleased when it showed no signs of life either. Um, which meant that my first soldering job maybe was okay uh, and that it might be a software issue, which it turned out to be. Um, I just hadn't finished tweaking all of the necessary files. So uh, I got over that hurdle eventually and am now starting to um, uh, 
dive into the software that we'll be running on here. The stepper drivers that are on here are the uh, trinamic stepper drivers. If you, I don't know that you'll be able to see it, but the little driver module has some pins sticking up. Uh, the reason they do that is because these particular modules, you can, you can speak to them over serial. For example, they also have a couple extra pins to give you additional information. And your typical motherboard for, say, a 3D printer may not know how to use those modules. So the pins stick up as well as down, and you can put jumper wires on them. So anyway, I, I will be using that serial port to talk with those modules. And that's the part that I'm digging into now. There's a lot that you can do with those modules, I'm sure I will only touch the surface. Um, but that's my, that's my next challenge is getting a handle on that. And you mentioned earlier, Steve, uh, the fact that there may be a Robothon coming up and I would uh, like to, you know, put in a vote for having a pop can challenge since that's what I'm working towards. And if the last couple of years have been any indication not having a deadline means I make no progress. So knowing that there's a deadline, if it is part of the next Robothon, might motivate me to make more progress. Okay, well, that is, uh, that is duly noted. Um, I think uh, Donna, yeah, Donna is Donna still, oh yeah, there she is. So I would assume that Donna has uh, caught that as well. And uh, that will be, uh, we'll make sure we uh, put that in the lineup. Um, so yeah, we, we've, we've got a lot of, you know, there's a lot of kind of interesting things that are ideas that are floating around with regard to the next Robothon. One of them being that it would be kind of cool to stream it so that people who have been joining us, you know, remotely at these meetings and aren't locals would be able to uh, at least watch it. So uh, figuring all, figuring some of those kinds of things out, and then uh, you know possibly having um, side presentations like like the uh, the virtual Robothon exhibitions that we've had maybe there. Um, uh, there's there's all kinds of interesting things that we could do. So uh, plus plus uh, you know however many of these contests that we think we could bring back and get enough participation to you know make them worth. Uh, worth doing so so anyway yeah well uh, I, I think um, uh, let's see um, Mark is a Mark Kenworthy and he's a he's another one of the pop can challenge guys that uh, I'm sure would like to see that come come back all right um let's see so do we have so has anybody else got anything they would like to share kind of looking through i'm not seeing uh not seeing james i'm um, um james egan i was kind of hoping he said he would be here so i i could uh we could show you his uh, show you his slides, but I wouldn't really be able to talk much on them because I've only just scanned them myself, and I'm not uh, have not talked with him specifically about his project. But uh, okay, um, let me see. Um, well, how about if I bring? Uh, I've got a, I've got a few things here that uh, I can show you, Curso. Yeah, let me. Uh, share my desktop there we go and of course you know i'm sure uh, uh the, i'm sure everybody has probably seen the uh the videos for uh for this the bmw ix flow featuring e-ink is the approach to bring the body of the car i'll turn i'll turn him down because it's kind of you know he's just a lot of kind of chatter I think the most intriguing thing, of course, is just watching how the, the, the car itself changes colors, you know, as far as why anybody would actually want a car that does this, you know, your guess is as good as mine. 
it's kind of cool that the technology is there. Of course, you know, being able to walk up to the front of the thing and touch it with your finger and have it change color. Okay. So I'm very intrigued by the fact that it's not changing instantaneously over the entire surface. That it's would that tend... Perhaps some of you have seen the, uh, the, the videos. I believe they introduced this at CES 2022. And um, there, was a, um, there was a guy standing there um, with this thing going behind him. And uh, I, I found it quite distracting, actually, as he, he was talking about this thing. And, and this, this car was, you know, the, 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 the black and white stuff was flashing down the side of the car. And, and uh, it was, um, I don't know, you know, to me, it seems like it could be a distraction to people on the road. You know, this car is going along and all of a sudden poof, it turns from black to white or from white to gray or gray to black or, you know. Uh, it could seem like a could be a bit of a, a hazard on the road. So, and uh, and I couldn't even imagine what it would cost to get something like this fixed if somebody, you know, dings your door and breaks one of these uh, one of these little panels on this thing. You know, you could be looking at a lot of money to to put new, uh, you know, maybe replace an entire door or a whole side of the car or something like that, even for a small damage, small amount of damage. So. Um, Anyway, do we, any, do we know anything about the technology that would uh, help us understand why it isn't changing instantaneously over the whole surface? Is it actually um, uh, something built into the technology that it can't do that quickly? Or uh, you see what I'm saying? Because it, it seems to be sweeping through the surface. Sweeping the car. Yeah, I was kind of wondering about that. So I, I don't know how many of you have had uh, e-ink uh, e reader, uh, you know, books, electronic books. I've, I've had several versions of, uh, of the uh, Barnes and Nobles. And, you know, of course, there's, there's Kindles out there. And, and they tend to do the same thing in terms of the way the screen changes. I mean, there, there's a kind of a, of a wiping sort of an effect that occurs. But I'm almost wondering if on this car, I, I believe that the, the, they're actually little small tiles and they maybe they're kind of linked together uh, in some sort of a serial connection that flows across the car. And so, you know, when they command this color change, it kind of has to has to propagate through them from from one to the next. Because I did notice that, too, that it doesn't it doesn't just instantly change from one color to another. It's like it, it sweeps from the front to the back or from the left to the right or the top to the bottom. So um, not really sure. Go ahead. The other thing that would be interesting to know is, is there any access to that so that you could do images? <laughs> if you can change any one of them, can you change one and not another so that you could like, you could imagine a, a marquee display, right? Where the, where the, uh, imagine flames, right? Flames that are actually continuing the change from front to back as, as you're driving along. Oh my goodness. Uh, I, I, I could just see this thing causing accidents all over the place. <laughs> well, at the very least, it would make a great uh, um, um, parade float. Oh yeah. Oh, now there you go. There you go. That would be uh... <laughs> That would be an interesting application. Yeah, yeah. To just uh, <laughs> any uh, any other comments on this? All right. I am going to. Oh, it looks like I've got. Oh, let's see. Um. Oh, that's interesting. Huh. That was. Uh, let me see here. Uh, Let's try this one. Okay. Let's see. Let me uh, share again here. Four years ago, we began working on a new type of personal robot. We designed it to physically assist people in their daily lives especially where pain or other health conditions impact their activities. Our mission is to empower individuals to live more independently and to do more of what they want to do. I feel very 
strongly about living uh, independently and living on my own. I have three children who all invite me to be part of their lives, but I don't want to be dependent on them. And so anything that I can find that will help me do that is, is really, really valuable to my quality of life. It's my aid, it's my assistant, that it's, that's, that's like another, a third hand for me. In my mind, I'm still 23, but my body isn't. And the robot lightens the load for me and allows me the time and the energy to do the things that are really still very important for me to explore. I still have a lot to do. Alexa, ask Lab 1 to come to the dining room. Okay, going to the dining room now. Using the Labrador provides me a lot of independence, whether it's setting the table or getting the laundry into the washing machine. I'm not lifting anything. I'm not having to bend over. I'm not at risk of falling. It's providing me with the ability to do tasks that normally I would have to ask for help with. It's like having a second person in the house. It helps that much. Some of the abilities that I lost following my stroke was the use of my right side. I never realized how much I couldn't do anymore. But with the retriever, when it was introduced to me, it, it was like like regaining that whole right side again because I was able to carry and move things for me that I, I unable to do at this at this point. So it's giving me that confidence level to where with the retriever, that's my right hand buddy. You know, it's something that, that I look forward to and and that I could say, hey, you know what, let's go on with life. Like, it doesn't stop here, it, it continues. Doing the grocery is, is just, is what you should be doing anyway. You don't miss bringing in the groceries, you know, things like that until you can't do it anymore. And to not have to ask for help, to be able to do it myself, not struggle with trying to lift a bag or put it on my lap and roll into the kitchen one at a time. I could get these things done. The independence and the freedom and just the, the self-worth of doing it, not having to feel that, you know, you're somebody's burden. The robot gave all that back. Yeah, thoughts? Any idea how much they want for that? <laughs> well, let's see. It says here that this is a pre-production unit. And uh, so let's see. Product availability may change prior to release the final production version for sale. So I kind of have a feeling they don't maybe know just how much this thing is going to be just yet. I, I thought the, uh, I like the, um, uh, you know, did you notice the multiple wheels when they did the little close up down near the floor when it was running up on the carpet there? And it looks like it has a, a bunch of wheels that run down the whole length of the thing. So um, you know, it's probably capable of, of getting over the tops of things pretty smoothly with that kind of a, of a, a roller system. Doesn't like, look like they're trying to do multiple floors though at all. Yeah, yeah. Then you, you, you'd need one of those. Uh, but you could all, you know, they have those residential elevators that you can install. So I suppose maybe mm -hmm. they would uh, <laughs> encourage that or, or better yet, just buy another one to use on the other floors, you know. So you, so. Well, yeah, there you go. But <laughs> no. that doesn't get things from one floor to the other, but an elevator yeah. could do that. Yeah. yeah you'd I've, been that in, I've been involved in a few of these kind of assistive technology things. And the, the problem with them is that you know, corporations, investors, they just won't invest in them because they don't, there isn't this 
there isn't a huge marketplace to sell into. Mm -hmm. um, and, the, and the technology, you know, there's substantial costs with doing that, all those nice molded panels and all of that plastic that you've got to injection mold and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I'll guarantee you it's a non-starter. But what does work is individual people volunteering to 3D print a prosthetic hand for somebody, you know, mm -hmm. or uh, there's a group down here in San Diego that's doing a, that has done a, um, uh, a, a wheelchair for kids, a powered wheelchair for kids that's made out of PVC. Um, and, you know, nobody's going to go out and, and produce those, mass produce them. But a family that has a kid that needs a wheelchair can um, grab some PVC and toss it together and buy some off-the-shelf parts and wire it up. And next thing you know, they've got a little wheelchair for their kid that they didn't have to spend. And this is no kidding, $100,000 for. Um, I mean, you know, like the, 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 you think about wheelchairs, that's a fairly good size market segment, but they're still really expensive. Electric wheelchairs, smaller market segment by quite a little bit, but you know, you can get those at a reasonable price. But a, an electric wheelchair in a kid's size, right? That like a kid can get in and out of, or that, you know, is, is the right size for a kid. The marketplace for that is just not big enough. Nobody makes them and, or very few people make them. And the people that make them charge an ungodly amount of money for them. Um, so you have to have like Mac daddy insurance to be able to afford one. But you can get a, you can make a PVC wheelchair for your kid, um, and you know put a joystick and some DC gear motors and you know a little control box and away you go. And they've got all the plans online and ready to go. So this is the sort of thing that should be done as a maker project, right? Like if people need this, then you know we should be putting together some kind of a design and coming up with a parts list and like, hey, if you're a maker and St. Louis, and you've got a friend who needs a device like this, here's how you can easily put one together over the course of a weekend for your friend. That's how this kind of stuff can work. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, all of that was, in my opinion, sorry, I, I should have put it that way. In my opinion. We got that. Thank you. The Labrador website has pricing. James, it's Go ahead, go ahead, Greg. How much? How, so, how much are they? Uh, they have two versions: a fixed height version, and then the adjustable height version that we saw in the video. Mm -hmm. The fix. If I'm doing the math right, well, the fixed height is fifteen hundred up front, and then a hundred dollars a month for thirty six months. Ooh. So, <laughs> what's what's that? Thirty six hundred plus fifteen hundred. So. About five thousand. The yeah. adjustable height one is another fifty dollars a month for those thirty-six months. Wow! But there's there's a there's an alternative to the pop can challenge. <laughs> a, a Labrador type caddy, yeah, um, device, which technically I think would be even easier. It would incorporate some of the same uh challenges but probably be an even easier contest then so um, how about this um have two levels of the contest and the first level is to make the base mobile that runs around and goes from point a to point b and then the second level of the contest is to put an arm in it to pick up pop cans and you know toss them away yeah there you and go you, can, you yeah. can have a you know like the the simple starter version which is a lower barrier to entry for people and then it can also be, uh, you know, good for helping out people who need something to carry stuff around. Yep. Yeah. I found that I thought it was interesting. You know, I, I don't know if you noticed in the video there that that was a I think that was a mini fridge that seemed to open the door on its own. Oh, on the counter. Yeah, yeah. It, it didn't. I didn't. It did. There was no, you know, nothing going out there and pulling it open. It just the door just kind of opened up automatically. Yep. Uh, I know pop can challenge. Part of the challenge, of course, is is to actually do the door opening. You're assuming that you're using a very basic non um, electric uh, electric door fridge. You know, an ordinary right. fridge with a handle on the front. So you have to be able to 
somehow get a hold of that handle and, and pull it out. And then I put a link uh, in the chat for a wheeled platform by Boston Dynamics that they were showing off at CES. Um, um, it, it, it was interesting watching the video, mostly from a reverse engineering standpoint, a how does it work <laughs> uh, perspective. I don't know that I would ever try to duplicate it, but it was kind of fun watching this say, well, how did they make it do that? <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, James, they're not going to create, the corporation is not going to, well, we all know this, corporation is not going to start something unless they can make a good profit on it and stuff and get a hold of the market share and all that, uh, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. And, and, and so, yeah, I mean, uh, you're, we're not going to see, it's going to have to be like a Kickstarter or, or that type of uh, funding to get wheelchairs made like that, because, uh, you know, uh, it's all about profit motive, really, and uh, getting hold of the market share, I think. Okay, anybody, uh, anybody else got anything? Because if not, we will uh, move along here. Let me uh, get back to, I'm gonna share my, share my desktop here again, just quickly. Okay, I always keep a couple of extra videos there. I, I will put the links for these things. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll get, maybe I'll post them in the chat here in a bit, but. Um, let's see, just uh, before we take our, our mid-meeting break here, just uh, just a kind of a general reminder that, uh, you know, same link next month, be on the front of the website. We will be back to our, our normal 10 o'clock uh, Saturday morning start time here, Pacific time. So, um, but that will also be in there. Um, I will, uh, sometime this week, I'll get the recordings for this uh, uploaded to the uh, to our YouTube page and then link from the website. So you can check back for that. And uh, feel free to continue to put uh, information into the chat window so that uh, everybody has uh, has that. And then I also um, I also actually post that into the um, into the meeting information. So there's the, the meeting slides are there, the um, the video link to the video and then um and then all of the the chat as well so anything that uh, you don't have to worry about uh, taking notes on any of that stuff you want to be able to get that um so with that um of course this uh this time as well just for a uh, uh for for professor kondo this is this time is going to be way off for, compared to his but um Let's uh, you know go by this clock. Let's uh, let's take about uh, oh, what do you say till about four, maybe four o one, four o two, something like that. So about six seven minutes, and um, um, we'll take a break and uh, you know run to the bathroom or whatever. And uh, I will uh, we'll get uh, we'll get Professor set up here with his uh, his slideshow, and uh, and then we can. Um, We'll resume. So, so call it uh, call it about four o two. Hey, Steve. Sorry. Yeah, I muted myself. Yeah. There we go. Yes. You, you, you mentioned a link that was 
posted at the beginning of the chat. For those of those of us that arrive later, it doesn't get show us a history. Okay, well, I can uh, let's see here. I think I still have it in my copy buffer. Let me check. I mean, is it at the top of your chat? It is. Yeah. Um, it's uh, I posted it just a little while ago. Let me see. Uh, okay, I posted it. Well, let's see. I guess that was about 3.30 or so. Mm -hmm. yeah, oh, you... 3.28 on, in the chat, I'm seeing the, uh, the posting, but I, I'll, I'll go ahead and uh, put it in there again. So I just put it in there for you right now. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Yeah, so take a look at that. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Are you posting that to everyone? Because I'm not seeing it. Uh oh. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yes. You know what? <laughs> no wonder. Okay. <laughs> sorry about that. There. How's that? Yeah. There we go. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay.
All right. Um, why don't we uh, let's go ahead and uh, get things rolling here. Professor Kondo, why don't you go ahead and get uh, get your uh, put your presentation up here. I will stop sharing on my end here, so you should be able to share to us now. Okay. Wait a sec. Yeah. Uh, can you see it? Yes, we can. Okay. So let's get started. Okay. Well, thank you. Let me just give you just a very brief introduction here and then uh, we can get, go ahead and let you get going. Um, so uh, Professor Kondo is coming to us live from Japan. And uh, we've had uh, the last three months, we've had international presenters. We've had Istanbul, we've had Zurich, Switzerland, and now we're having Japan this month. So uh, it's kind of cool to hear from people in other parts of the world and what they're doing. So um, anyway, I'm very pleased to uh, have uh, uh, Professor Yataka Kondo presenting to us today. So take it away. Thank you very much for your introduction. But uh, I, unfortunately, I'm not Professor just just Doctor, <laughs> and uh, yeah, the title is "Build Your Own Rust Robot from Scratch" version two. Version two means uh, I, I will show you later. And again, I'm Yuta Kondo, or uh, you talk. It's my username, and I think you, uh, the native speaker, can easily pronounce my Yutaka. And I am an um, engineer of preferred networks in Japan and also an author of the World First Ross 2 book. But uh, however, it's in Japanese. And uh, uh, I'm also ex organizer of Ross Japan Users Group. It's the, the, the total people is over 2,000 uh, people currently. And Nowadays, uh, I'm also an video chat song influencer, so I, I always using uh, you know, video chat song platforms. And my private information, I am uh, a father of two kids and also my wife. And yes. And uh, the preferred networks which I've joined is established in 2021. It's very newly company, and it's a uh, actually a co covered company from preferred networks to focus on robot robot product and business development, such as a consumer, uh, no, a home robot, and also service robot. Yeah. The brief information uh, are shown in YouTube and the left, uh, upper left side is tidy up robot. It's automatically uh, doing his uh, tidy up job by uh, object, uh, object recognition and also motion planning. And the right upper side is uh, robot teaching by natural language. Left uh, lower side is our uh, prototype mo mobile manipulator to, uh, to clean up a desk and wall for the uh, disinfection for the COVID-19. And the right lower side is our uh, our mo mobile robot for the construction site, and it has a camera to detect the uh, collision-free uh, field by the segment semantic segmentation, so the robot can uh, easily uh, move around without collision. Of course, you it's use uh, writer, but also use camera, or RGB camera. Today's agenda is four topics, and uh, one is ROS and ROS two, and second is robot design with ROS two. The third, 
robot, tech, uh, robot control by Rust. And lastly, I will introduce a use case, other use case. And today's goal is uh, we will be able to build your own original Rust2 ARM robot from scratch. And version two means I have version one presentation for the this uh, ROS developers conf, uh, day conference uh, on 2021. And it it's so today's talk is upgraded one of this one. And but this uh, presentation has all coding and more detailed information uh, contained. So if you are interested in my talk today, please see this one also. The first topic is ROS and ROS2. ROS, I think you may already know, but ROS is the robot operating system and is a set of software libraries and tools that help you build robot applications and it has lots of things to do and ROS has what you need for your next robotics project and it's all open source and very easy to use and easy to install your in your uh, project but uh, the original use case of ROS is uh, limited, restricted, restricted. So uh, first number of robots is only for single robot and computation uh, needs uh, more uh, power and real timeness is not required. But uh, some uh, special case you can use uh, real time, but it's very difficult. And network quality needs more excellent network connectivity. And the uh, usual users, uh, users are expected in research, mostly academia, and the programming style is very totally free. So uh, you you can uh, you can program by yourself from scratch. But new cases uh, are happened and uh, people want to use teams of multiple robots and small embedded platforms and also real-time systems. And the usual network is not ideal network. So uh, the, the new use case is no ideal networks can be used and also people want to use in production environments and programming style is to be prescribed patterns for building and structuring systems it means more uh, it has rule to write to your code but it's system uh, it's um, it's very simple and uh, easy to use. Uh, I mean, the, the left side is ROS and the right side is ROS2. That is why ROS2 is uh, established. Uh, this is the ROSCOM presentation slide, but uh, ROS2 has four things. The priming tools, capability, and X system. Priming means the node graph. I mean, the, uh, uh, the program connects each other, each other uh, nodes. And two means visualization or simulation. The capability means uh, manipulation software or navigation softwares uh, or uh, more. The X system means the community. It, which writes this uh, Seattle Robotics Society. And that the uh, background of prime priming system is used DDS. DDS means data uh, 
distribution service and it's a middleware protocol and API standard for data center connectivity. And it, it is used uh, by uh, very large scale system like a, a plant or factory or very uh, uh, vital systems. So the DDS technology is a very um, uh, important to use the, uh, under the important systems. And so ROS to use the DDS for the middleware. It's a uh, ROS middleware means interface of DDS vendor implementation and message transport and serialization. And the, the ROS2 has also client library interface and it's, a, uh, it's for implementation uh, uh, each, uh, with, for, for each programming languages. And the ecosystem has lots of things. And Rosbug is for data record and play tool. And Alvis2 is visualization. And Ignition Gazebo is for simulation. Uh, Move It2 is for manipulation. And also Nav2 is for navigation. It's very uh, uh, useful to use. And Next topic is uh, robot design for with uh, next robot design with ROS2. Today's goal is to build the pan tilt bot uh, by, from scratch. And it's a minimum viable arm robot, I, I hope. And pan, it has pan tilt axis and th th its uh, motor, I, which I use is Robot is dynamic cell motors. And also on top of the hand has a camera and it, it is uh, in the real sense. Uh, robotics dynamic cell is a sub motor for robots and op uh, lots of operation modes. For example, current, current control, velocity control and position control. And it is uh, 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 but there's only official ROS1 package, but no ROS2 packages. So I've made it. I made them. And uh, the CAD model of the motors and hinges are downloadable from the download center of Robotis. A web page so you can use this step file for the writer. The interior sense uh, you, you already know about the color and depth camera inside and with uh, IMU. And fortunately there's official, uh, official ROS2 packages from Intel. So uh, how to design your robot and uh, it uh, contains five steps. Uh, first, design your robot by some CAD software and export URDF. It's a robot format for ROST and, from, and it's from a CAD model. And um, my, you need to migrate the ROS format to the ROS2 format and enable the ROS2 control configuration and then run with ROS2 applications. Uh, URDF means Unified Robot Description Format and it's an um, XML format for representing a robot model. For example, this is URDF, but it's a tree uh, representation, but uh, uh, actually it's a, a XML format. And the ROS ecosystem can use can be used the URDF for the uh, visualization or simulation. 
for for example um, for my case i use fusion 360 for the 3d CAD software because there is a personal license for overuse and it's free but 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 uh, limited functionality but it's very uh, 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 enough to use and then uh, you need to export the URDF file from the Fusion 360. So I used this Fusion to URDF repository to, to export, uh, to convert the Fusion 360 model and to the URDF model. Uh, be careful that the Fusion to URDF can only export ROS to format not a uh, to format. This is the example of the video uh, from, uh, to design the uh, pan tilt board from scratch and then uh, exports, uh, no, uh, URDA exports. First, uh, set up the, your motor and hinges. And next, second axis. Be careful the, the uh, root of the robot need to uh, named as base link. It's a restriction for the exporter and next you can uh, change the rotation limits for each motors and this is the uh, complete model of the robot and next export to the urdf Finally, we have a uh, robot uh, URDF format for the pan tilt bot. Uh, next, uh, you need to migrate to the roster package and the, the the result one is contains here, but uh, you need to replace the package for package format to the ROS2 and also uh, replace the launch files to the ROS2 format then, and, and pipes. And also ROS control tag to the ROS2 control tag. I will explain uh, about it. And also the after designing the arm robot, you need to attach the real sense on top of the punted bot. And official real sense to description package contains a, a real sense the file, and you can easily insert the D four three five model into the this punted bot URDF. Uh, like it, like this. Finally, uh, you can check the operation by joint state publisher. It's a dummy mode for the robot. And then uh, the next uh, third topic is robot control by ROS2. ROS2 control is a framework for robot control and it, it is a pluggable architecture and it can switch the controller from, for example, position control to velocity control or velocity control to FO control. And also the uh, hardware interface is also pluggable. Uh, I mean, the for example, today's case, the robotics uh, robotics system uh, interface, if you have the robotics 
system interface, you can use it and also uh, switch to the you know, other robot platform you can uh, use. Yeah, and also the 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 ROS2 control framework is uh, applicable for the third party system uh, like uh, Move It Two and Nav Two. So if once you have a ROS2 control framework, uh, you can use any kind of ROS ROS2 applications. The this is our my uh, repository. Dynamic Cell Control has uh, two uh, three package packages. One is a, a dynamic cell hardware, which contains a system interface implementation for dynamic cell. And system interface uh, system interface means this side of interface. And Pantil bot description means uh, which we made before. It's a, a use case for Pantil bot. And also, this is a official Robotis uh, production pro product, Robotis Open Manipulator X. And this is this package contains a use case for it. Now, this is the concept of uh, dynamics hardware. And this is a dynamics hardware and it connects to the resource manager and also real robotics uh, dynamics motors. And it has two interface. One is command, uh, I mean the input to the uh, motors, position, velocity, and effort. Talk, talk, and uh, output interface has position, uh, also position, velocity, and effort. Uh, you need to describe the uh, ROS2 control plugin configuration like this, and red area uh, this is described uh, hardware. Uh, in uh, plugin information <clears throat> and also brew areas and uh, it's uh, are des described the joint information and next one is ROS2 controllers plugin configuration I mean that this is a controller manager area and it has a, a ROS, ROS parameters for controller managers and also a list up of controller plugins. Uh, this robot has velocity controller, joint trajectory controller, and joint state broadcaster. Broadcaster means the uh, output this state uh, information. And the, the these two controller uh, tag uh, contains a ROS parameter for each controller. For example, this one is for velocity controller and this one for joint trajectory controller. Again, the operation check with dummy robot. Please check the use dynamics, uh, use dummy parameter to be enabled. And next, launch the ROS2 control manager. And finally, switch to the joint trajectory controller and send trajectory like this command. This is the result with dummy with our dummy robot. I uh, sorry, I send. Uh, this uh, trajectory like that. This is a radian parameter, but it has a two degree of freedom. And this is a duration from, no, uh, time from start. Yeah, uh, if uh, once 
and and dummy robot was successfully done and next is a real robot and um, very uh, easy to use real robot by disable use dummy parameter look like this the totally the com command is totally the same as the dummy robot but the real robot is uh, moving around as the same as dummy robot oh sorry And the other use cases uh, are shown here. Uh, first, I mentioned Open Manipulator X, and it is also uh, uh, applicable for our, my uh, Lopetis Dynamics Cell hardware. And this, uh, uh, this terminal, will send uh, velocity information, look like this. I note that this is a velocity control and next uh, changing to the uh, tra joint trajectory controller. I mean, it's uh, position control. And the robot change the, uh, its uh, poses to the uh, uh, values which I input. Uh, this is the uh, uh, repository or source code. And this is the original mobile manipulator. Uh, I used the Roomba for the mobile unit and also attach on top of the Roomba. Uh, for the manipulation and computation. <laughs> the, the special issue is the on top of the hand has a LiDAR. And it can move with a joystick and uh, wait a sec. Uh, it has also manipulation, so you can easily use the teaching with a joint stick. <laughs> no, easily, not easily, but you can. Ah, uh, yeah, uh, this is this this robot has just some Xavier for the computation and also has interior sense for the visual uh, sensing. But currently, we uh, I didn't use uh, not so much. This is a visualization example uh, for the right lighter and also real sense depth camera. And uh, this work contains here. So if you are interested in this robot, please refer here. And the neural network application, I, I, I made it. And first, oh. wait a sec. So ah okay, and this uh this is a grip control by hand gesture estimation. Uh, I I used the uh, hand gesture estimation by uh, neural network, and also this is um, so we, uh, we we cannot sh uh, I cannot show the video but inverse inverse kinematics estimation by neural networks uh, fully connected neural networks and it is uh, uh, 
in usual case, uh, the robot can be calculated by mathematical uh, approach, but in this case, I uh, proposed the uh, neural network approach and it is successfully done for reasonable uh, uh, pre pre precisely for, for, for reasonable uh, approximatory. it contains here. And the uh, last uh, example is, the, this is the fencing robot, I mean Japanese kendo robot, but it has lots of uh, degree of freedom, but it can be used. And also this is the, the other user uh, example, but uh, this person uh, is uh, what's used for the, the digi, the construction robot. No. Uh, uh, yeah, the wrap up and please let's uh, build your own Rust robot from scratch. Thank you. All right, thank you, Yutaka. Yeah. Well, well questions. Got to be some questions out there. I have one. Okay, go ahead, Colin. Uh, are you? Where are you based at? Where's uh, in Japan? Are you located? Um, Tokyo. Tokyo. Yes. Uh, is your lab available to visit or is it closed off? Um, mm, uh, it's not laboratory, but company. And uh, um, it's not easy to enter my company because uh, we, uh, we are developing new robot, but uh, I, I hope please come in. <laughs> So uh, please uh, send a, uh, send a contact before coming. Of course, mm -hmm. of, of course. Uh, uh, I mean, I, I go to uh, Yokosuka a uh, uh -huh. few years. Uh, really? Not lately though, uh, not just the pandemic, but somebody took a permanent position there. So uh, that, excludes me from going on every two years or so and until mm -hmm. there's something else but i did i uh, last time i was there i actually stumbled upon uh in yokohama i stumbled upon the uh satellite uh, mm -hmm. uh i can't remember what it was satellite imaging and satellite equipment and stuff and all of a sudden you know i happened to be entered the conference almost by accident and it kind of was a happy blessing because I, I learned about uh, 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 quite a lot about uh, satellite communications equipment uh, while they were having it at the conference center. This was right before, this, this was January 2019, uh, right mm -hmm. before uh, the pandemic hit. That's great. Uh, the Yokohama is closest uh, by uh, Tokyo. So uh, please uh, uh, come in later. And also I want to join this Seattle of this community on site in the near future. Oh, that would be, that would be wonderful. Yeah. Mm. yeah so it's great co community. Perhaps we will have, uh, yeah, by, by this, hopefully by this summer, we will be meeting in person again. So that mm. would that'd be very cool. Yeah, great. Yeah. Um, I, I did have a question at the at the very beginning of your presentation when you were you were showing you had the kind of the four video boxes going. Yeah. 
and mm. the the robot that was running around the construction site this one yeah. it had this head i saw some lights like like yellow and green lights um on, underneath it I, it's kind of curious of what it was doing there is that yeah then this robot has only rgb camera and also rider but the using deep learning technology, you can uh, recognize the free space area by uh, semantic segmentation of uh, the deep learning technology. This is the example of the free space segmentation. And this green area is free for moving and pink area is collision, uh, collision aware area. Mm -hmm. huh. I mean, this one is, for example, uh, cables or some uh, 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 collision object. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, it, it was also able to, I mean, could it, it could detect people? Yeah, so, yeah, of course, yes. Yeah. And the depth information from the RGB uh, no, no, no. The, uh, the the depth information is got by deep learning with uh, RGB camera only. Oh. Hmm. I have another question. Yes. Uh. uh that one, that robot that you were, oh no, right there. While this infection, ah. do they use uh, ult the ultraviolet C wavelength like like on this? This is a ultraviolet uh, C band uh, uh, LED string on this uh, used for disinfection of surfaces and stuff. I noticed that uh, uh, 2020, in in June of 2020, they had uh, in Japan already several robots with uh, uh, e disinfection for hospitals and stuff. Is that mm. essentially the same that the wall disinfection is doing there? Yeah, yeah. That this is the disinfection uh, uh, example, but uh, our uh, company doesn't for for the hospital mo mobility. But this this is the mm, mm, yet research case. But the robot has a, a wipe hand, and it can uh, wipe around the desk and wall automatically. Hmm. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, we uh, Go ahead. Another question. What, 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 what was your company, please? Um, this is uh, preferred robotics, but oh, it, oh, yeah, that's uh, it. That's right. The 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 covered company from preferred networks. Yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, it has no English site yet, website yet, but yeah, this is the official information from uh, preferred networks and preferred robotics. Uh, sure. I will share this uh, slide later for this community, so uh, please check it. Okay. Uh, okay, now I can share the link. Wait a sec. I mean, certainly if I'm if I'm nearby, I, I would certainly uh, send you an email and ask uh, to meet up, uh, but yeah. uh, only if you're available and nothing, you know, it's not too much of an inconvenience for you or anything like that. <laughs> you know, and usually it would probably be on a weekend, either a Saturday or Sunday. Mm -hmm. because, uh, you know, I think I can with my family. <laughs> 
maybe. Yeah, we're all busy, but uh, um, the, the trouble is, you know, it depends on my work schedule and oftentimes when I'm in Japan, it's 10 hour days, six days a week or <laughs> longer, much longer. Yeah. Sometimes 12 hour days, six days or seven days a week. Mm -hmm. and it's very, some, often it's very hard for me to get time off to uh, uh, go anywhere and I usually can never make it past Tokyo, but it's plenty to do in Tokyo. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I hope so. Excellent. Thank you. Everybody see that over in the chat there? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Any, uh, any other questions? I think some of you are interested in this environment better or this community and this is this repository has total information about wow for for this robot and uh, I, I yeah. think you can see later. Could you, um, Yutaka, could you go ahead and post the link to this, uh, to the GitHub? Oh, okay, of chat? course, yes. Yeah, that'll let, I know that'll be, I know that's in the presentation, but it's to, mm, yeah, kind of I, in there. I sent you. Yeah. We've had, we've actually had present, we've had several presentations on Ross and Ross 2 over the last few months, so it's, uh, it seems to be a you know it's very popular right now and mm -hmm. it's cool the amazing things that people are doing with it let's see is there a github for seattle robotic society <laughs> um we haven't set one up <laughs> Probably makes sense to do that though, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good, good opportunity. Yeah. Any other questions? All right. Well, uh, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Kondo. I appreciate your uh, taking time out of your your weekend. <laughs> yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Thank you for joining the late uh, yeah. meetup. But yeah. I, I I can join here uh, thanks to the thanks to it. Mm -hmm. So um, in in the you know in the future, if you ever want to, you can look at our meetings. You know, we have we have our meetings on on YouTube. After uh huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. The actual real time of them is uh, middle of the night for you. So <laughs> I would hope that but, you would stay up in the middle of the night to come to one of our meetings. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I, we aren't that crazy. <laughs> yeah, I, I will. I will try it. But uh, you know, you can welcome to to check out any of the videos. Now, we've been recording for about a year and a half now, so we don't have a lot of history yet. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it goes back for a ways. So, all right. Thank, thank you. you very much. Yeah, thank you very much too. And let's see. So, okay, just gonna stop, and I'm going to. I'm going to go ahead and grab the screen here one last time. Okay, and uh, let's see, with that, 
Anybody, uh, anybody got any final parting thoughts here? Otherwise, I'll go ahead and stop recording. <laughs>